We are the light of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the light of the world. We are the town which is built on the hill. And a town which is built in the hill, it cannot be hidden. Meaning that, you know, as a town built on the hill, we are that light that brings, the Lord uses to bring the light all over for the world, for the people to know our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Because without us, people don't know our Father. They've never seen Him. They've never seen God. The world have never seen God. The world cannot see God. But the world can see me and you. Then what the world is doing, the world, they are looking at me and you to see how we speak, to see how we act, to see how we behave. As they watch you and me, they watch me and you to see Christ. Then that's why we have to allow Christ to live through our lives. We have to allow Jesus Christ to live through our lives. As we have heard, as we have studied the word of God and we practice that word of God. As we practice the word of God, as we allow Jesus Christ to live through us, we will be, we will be you know, Jesus Christ in practice. Hallelujah. In so many will be able to look will be able to follow and see Jesus Christ through us as they look at the way we love, the way we act, the way we talk. Then as a child of the living God, be conscious of it, that you are supposed to be an example in this world. We have to be an example. We have to live life in which like the world may see the world may be able to be taught the word of God through our lives, through our actions, through our words. Hallelujah. Amen. As a Christian, our life must be more than about me. First of all, it must be about Christ, that in everything that I do, let Jesus Christ be glorified. Let Jesus Christ be port portrayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Second of all, let my life and our life bring, be able so that when somebody look, must be able to see Jesus in our life. Amen. And they can be transformed. Their life could be able to be changed Amen. as they copy you and me. Hallelujah. Because whether you are aware of it, people are watching you. Amen. Whether you are aware of it, people, somebody is watching you. Then that's why now we must make it a point. Let Jesus Christ be glorified in our action. Let Jesus Christ be glorified in our speech. Let people be able to see Christ in our lives. Amen. Then you know, you can sum up what I'm talking about that we must crucify our flesh. We must die. You know, you must die and let Jesus Christ live in you. Let Jesus Christ be able to take over you and use you as you are still in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Then as you do that, your light is shining. A town which is built in the hill cannot be hidden. And nobody light a light and hide it. But will ever switch on the light. It makes sure that it must put a light to the whole world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Then what we must do, we must make sure that uh, our Christian life is not hidden. Our Christian life is, beautiful, is, is visible. Do by all means. That's what life is all about. That's what Christianity is all about. Don't hide your Christianity. Don't hide 
You are Christ's nature. Let, that the, let the nature of Christ in you radiate through you. Let it manifest through you. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the reasons why we are alive, why is still day on me and you, is so that this gospel can be preached through you and me. How is it preached? Sometimes you don't need a pulpit. Sometimes you just have to live. You have to live. You have to be a Christian. That's all you have to be. Be a Christian. Be a Christian. A real one. Whom one, anyone can look and see Jesus Christ through our action. Whereas the devil does not want us to represent Christ. Also the devil wants people to represent him in this world. He's doing by his best to possess people and live according to the worldly standard and do things according to the worldly nature. We must refuse that. And constantly look at the word of God. Constantly look on what Christ is doing and follow it. Hallelujah. And follow it. No matter what, constantly do that. Follow the word of God. No matter how hard it is, leave the word. Hallelujah. Leave the word. Don't live the worldly life. Because whether people are aware of it, if somebody is living according to the standard of this world, that person is representing the kingdom of the devil. Hallelujah. When somebody is doing things and living a worldly life, that person, whether that person is aware of it or not, that person is representing the devil. But we are representing Jesus here in this world. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says that in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform to the way of doing things of this world. Because, you know, in order for somebody to learn the way of doing things of the world, that person, they don't even need to study the things of the world. They, you know, when you are living with the people of the world, whether you are aware of it, you are copying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. The same way when the child is born, that child, you, you don't tell the child, oh, begin to copy this, don't copy this. But when that child begins to listen here when people are talking, his talk is copying the way they talk. When that child is see, looking around on when the people are doing things, that child is copying the way they act. Then that's why the worldly nature, you don't need to be told uh, learn this. Automatically, who you spend, what you watch, is teaching you the worldly nature. But, the more we study the word, the more we study the word, the more we are surround ourselves with the word of God. The more we surround ourselves in what God is doing, we are being transformed by the word of God, receiving the nature of God. And sooner or later, by just doing that, spending the time in the presence of God, studying the word of God, spending the time Focusing on the things of God, you will find yourself doing the things that Christ wants you to do. Hallelujah. Whereas somebody who is busy with the things of God, surrounding themselves with the systems of the world, they don't they are not aware, but they are programming themselves themselves in the worldly way. But we ought to resemble our Father. We ought to resemble our master Jesus Christ. And we can only resemble him as we focus on him also. As we focus on his word. As we spend our time in the presence of God. As we spend our time in the word of God. As we do so, we will be able to, to
to bring the kingdom of heaven here in this world. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Then tonight, I want to go straight to the word of God that we shared tonight. That word is also very rich. We're going to go, we're going to be going to the book of Matthew chapter 11. We're going to read it from verse number 9. Then what, what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. This is the one about whom is written, I will send the messenger ahead of you. Whom will prepare a way before you. Truly I tell you among those who are born of women. There have not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence. And the violent people have been riding it. Then Jesus began to announce the town which most of his miracles have been performed. Because they did not repent. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. Amen. Then first of all, here we are hearing Jesus Christ talking about John the Baptist. Then when this was the time that the John disciples were sent by John to say that go and confirm whether Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And that's why we read earlier where the Bible was saying that Go and tell John, the blind eyes are seeing, the dead are being raised, sicknesses are being healed. And the gospel has been preached. Hallelujah. Amen. And now when the disciples of John have been gone, he was addressing the people who were there. Then when the people went out to the wilderness, what did they see? Did they see a prophet? They said yes. And Jesus said that John was more than a prophet. John was the mob than a prophet because of a work that he was going to do. Hallelujah. The work of introducing Jesus Christ. John as a forerunner to go and introduce the coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Then that's why verse number 11, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, among those who are born of women, they have not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yes, whoever is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Hallelujah. A few months ago, we talked about this. That okay, John was greater than the, all the, the prophets of the Old Testament. He was greater. There was nobody who is greater than 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 john the baptist in the in the in the prophet of all because of the kind of the work that he was about to do hallelujah but yet anyone who is born again in the new testament is greater than john anyone as long as you are born again as long as you are you are greater you are you are, you are born again you are greater than john the baptist you are greater even than the prophets are you hear what I'm saying? Because you are born again. Because you are the child of the living God. You have received Christ. Remember, let me tell you this. When you are born again, you were receiving the nature, the very nature of God. I don't know whether you are getting that one. The very nature of God. When you are born again, you are not just receiving the spirit of God. In the Old Testament, those who were used by God, they were just receiving the Spirit of God. It used to come upon them. Then they were called the prophets. But in the New Testament, you are not just receiving the Spirit of God, but also you are the child of the living God. Hallelujah. 
Wow! That's what the Bible said that in the book of John chapter 1 verse number 12. Yet to all those who did receive him, he gave them the right to become the children of the living God. Children not born of natural descendants, but children born of the living God. You are born of God. Hallelujah! Amen. Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ was born of God. Are you what I'm saying? Amen. He was born of God. He's a real son of God. Then when we accepted him, he gave us the, the same nature of God. You have got the nature of God. Wow. How wonderful is that? You have got what? The very nature of God. You are the child of the living God. You are not just the servant. Hey. You are not just the servant, but you have got the very nature of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why in the kingdom of God, we are greater than John. We are greater than the prophets of old. Wow. Wow. Do you know that in the, in the Old Testament, even though some people were righteous in the Old Testament, Nobody could die and go to heaven. But you, because you are born again, because you are born again, because of the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that washed away all of our sins, the blood of Jesus, which is inside of us, even when we depart from this world, we are able to go to heaven. Hallelujah! What the great men of the Old Testament could not do, we can do. Because of this very nature of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Okay, let me go further so that I can cover one or two things. The Bible here we are hearing the Bible in verse number verse number 12 of Matthew chapter 11, NIV. From the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence. And the violence people have been raiding it. Wow. You know, these are the people who are hungry for the things of God. These are the people who are so hungry. When they are so by their hunger, they are able to cause things to happen from above. Are you what I'm saying? That's why we're hearing that. Since the time of, of John, the kingdom of God have been subjected to violence. And the violence people have been raiding it. You know like heaven is full of blessings. The kingdom of heaven is full of blessings. And due to your hunger, due to your expectation, you can cause God to do things for you on your behalf. Are you know what I'm saying? When you are not just getting content of the little, but seeking for more. The Bible says that it all depends on your hunger. If the, the, the more hungry you are, the more violent you are, you seek more and you get more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we must learn to be what? To have a violent faith. To raid the kingdom of heaven. To, 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 to be able to cause things to be brought down from above. Hallelujah. Amen. And they happen in the natural. Because of our faith. Because of our heart desire. Hallelujah. Okay. I want to go to this other verse also. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles have been performed. Because they did not repent. You know, Jesus Christ performed lots of miracles. He performed lots of miracles. But there was something that troubled him. That people, no matter what kind of miracle he performed. On those towns, they did not repent. And he began to denounce their town. Because they did not repent. Then there are people like that. You find that God is doing a lot. God is doing testimonies. There are lots of testimonies God is doing day in and day out. But they are not changing. 
They're not changing. Some people are just receiving what God is doing, but they are not changing. God is doing these signs and wonders. God is giving us blessings that we may do what? We may receive the kingdom of heaven. We may receive his, the son of the living God. And we must change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. The Bible says that to whom much is given, much is required. Then when God is, is doing things by his grace, we must show that we appreciate him. We must appreciate are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. We must appreciate that when God is doing those wonders, those miracles also change. When God is revealing himself, also do what? Also change. Appreciate by following him. Jesus Christ was not happy because people were not following him as they should. Hallelujah. They were not following as they should. Then when God revealed himself, when God performs signs and wonders, we must follow God as we should. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, mighty Holy, Spirit, mighty Holy Spirit, help me, help me to follow God. As I, should, as I should in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen you must never you know as a child of the living god you must never get used to miracles some people they get to the point where they just get used to miracles they get used to what god is doing it's wrong don't never allow yourself to get used to what God is doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me never to get used Amen. on what God is doing. In the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus say every miracle every, miracle. every testimony, every testimony. Let, it to me. let it minister to me let let it touch me let it, touch me. Let it change my life In the, In the name of Jesus. Then yes, Jesus Christ here, he was angry because yet many miracles were performed, but yet people did not change. People did not follow him as they should. And he even said that it will be, it, to those towns, it will be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen to me. To somebody who the gospel has been preached, to somebody signs and wonders has been performed and yet they did not change, that person will be punished for that at the end of the day. Hallelujah. There will be, you know, gospel is preached for two things. First thing is pray is preached for repentance. That whoever hear that gospel must repent must accept Jesus Christ, must follow Jesus Christ. Second thing, how what the gospel is preached, is preached for judgment. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Second thing, what the gospel is preached, is preached for judgment. If somebody can see the man of God preaching in the street, and that person say, ah, ah, if they, if they take that gospel, first of all, they will be saved. Hallelujah. But if they hear that word of God, they took it for granted. It's for their judgment. That on the day of judgment, if they die without repenting, they will be judged. When they say, oh, we have never heard anybody talking about Jesus. I've never heard Jesus about Jesus. God will say that. 
I've sent a servant so and so in the street to come and preach. You look aside. You took him for granted. That day was the day of your salvation. So and so, God will say, one day I send one of my servants to go to Facebook to go and preach this gospel. That day, it was the day that I was sending my servant so that you may be saved. You thought it was for fun, but no, it was for your salvation. Then gospel is preached for two things, for salvation and for judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Those who take it and they, they are going to be saved. Those who ignore it is going to be used against them at the day of judgment. Hallelujah. Matthew 11 verse number 28. Jesus said that come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. All of you. Jesus saying that come to me. All those who are weary. All those who are burdened. And I will give them rest. That means even today. Jesus Christ is still calling people. Everybody. Even those who are not born again. Some people they think that gospel is for those who are saved. No. Gospel is for everyone. Hallelujah. It's even for those people who are not born again. Because Jesus Christ died for everybody. On the cross of Calvary. So that everybody. Whoever who will accept him as their Lord and their Savior. Shall be saved. And have everlasting life. Even today Jesus still saying the same thing. Come to me. All those who are in trouble. Come to me. All those who are things are tough. Come to me, all those who are things are not going well. And he will give them rest. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you this something. Know that there is no rest without Jesus Christ. There is no rest. Sometimes people may act like they are enjoying life. They act like they are enjoying life. Maybe they act like they are enjoying life even drinking. Even doing one, two, three, they may act like things are well. But without Jesus Christ, there is no rest. Hallelujah. Everybody is looking for Jesus. Whether they know it or they don't know it. Everybody in this world is looking for the Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said in the book of John 14 verse number 6. Jesus said that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. There is no, Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only Savior. There is no any other way. Whether some people have received another lie. Because some people have been lied to. You know, one of the video. It's got about 11,000 views. One of the person who was watching that video, or one of our video, was a, a Muslim person. When that person was watching that video, I think he watched the whole of it. He said that you are saying God, you are saying uh, what, 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 Allah. I'm saying to you today, some people have, have heard some lies. Are you what I'm saying? The truth is that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. There is no any other way. There is no any other place where the rest is found. The rest is found in Jesus Christ. Not in money. Not in jobs. Not in cars. Not in any other religion. Is found only on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus said that come to me all of you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Are you looking for rest of your soul? Are you looking for satisfaction of your life? Jesus Christ is our way. And this afternoon I want to lead us in this evening. In a short prayer wherever you are before we go to prayers. The prayer to renew our vows. And the prayer to accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Wherever you are, let us say this prayer together. 
Let us say these words together. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you are the Son of the living God who came to the world and died for all of my sins. Lord Jesus Christ, wash me with your blood. Forgive me all of my sins. Right now, Jesus, I am asking for your power. The power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, bless me today. Protect me from today. From today. I am born again. I am saved. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray wherever you are. Mayanduru Bosiandara by Anduru Bosiandara by Andura by Anduru Bosiandara by Maya Kataraba Sutara Bayandara Bayandurubusyandara Bayande Mandara Bayandurubu Mayandara Basundara Bayandura Bayandura Bayende Shia Katara Bayandurubusyandara Bayandurubusyandara Bayende Pray so that God can give you a rest. Let God give you a rest this year. Let God give you a rest as you live in Christ. May God give you rest in every sector of our life. Let there be rest in our families, in our country. This year, so let everything be well with us. Everything that was giving us trouble this year, as a catch fire, 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 and I command them to come up. Let there be rest in every set of our lives. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be miracle jobs. Let there be breakthrough. I pray for every prayer request that has been presented today. Let that prayer request turn into a testimony. As a year of 2020, I bless you. Everything shall be well with us, shall be well with our family, shall be well with our country shall be well in every sector 
Mayando rubo zandara bayando rubo yande. Wherever you are, receive every help you want. Receive every answer you want. Receive every blessing you want. In the name of Jesus Christ. Karabasoto rubo shandara.